The following show contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Constructive Deconstruction, ladies and gentlemen. Holy shit, it's been too long. We are finally back. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> I am your host. Yes, I am your host, Yay. Gomer the Ranting Thespian. Well, I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and my co-hosts, as you as you have heard, are Holly Christine and Gonzo Link. Hello. Hello. <laughs> yes, holy shit, it's been way too long, and, and what a good time to come back, too. Holy shit, so... So before we get into that, since it's been a while, how have you two been? Because I'm sure inquiring minds are wanting to know. Well, um, I've been okay. I've been I started a new job uh, lately. I've been working as a baker, and um, that's been a lot of fun. And um, apart from that, just waiting for summer to kick in here in our our town so that I can start doing uh, theater and other acting ventures. Ooh. Yeah, because apart from that, I've mostly just been watching Steven Universe, just trying to catch up on it. Ah, yay! I know, it's amazing. <laughs> what it was that sound? I don't know, but I, I agree with it. Yes, that, 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 is, that is me trying to emulate two Griffin's squee. Just can't do that. I, I really can't do it. Well, oh, it's man. not his squee, it's more of his like horrified scream, but I'm turning it into a squee. Uh, I'm, I'm weird like that. Ah, uh, So yes, another Steven yeah. Universe fan. Yay! So, so what have you been up to, Holly? I uh, work mostly. Uh, <laughs> not anything really exciting. Mm. Yeah, that's one of those things. And me, I, well, everybody who listens to this or watches this on YouTube or whatever, yeah, they know what I've been up to. <laughs> uh, but I will say that it's that as summer gets closer, my room is going to be getting hotter and hotter and hotter. To the point to where you might hear my my ceiling fan in future recordings after this, because holy shit! <laughs> ah, but yeah. So with all of that out of the way, oh, we came back at a really good time. Uh, and and I have to be very very ashamed of Indiana right uh, now. I don't know if I would call this a good time, an interesting time for sure. But yeah. I don't think anything yeah. about this is good times. <laughs> well, true. I mean, the topic matter is not good times, obviously. Well, it's it's a good it's a good time for us to just to deconstruct what's going on. Exactly. <laughs> true. <laughs> so. And and of course everybody knows. And I mentioned I was we were going to bring this up on the show on the last Thespian talk, so I talked about it just a little bit there. And in, in fact, I already have a nickname for Governor Pence of Indiana. I call I, I, what did I call him? I called him Penny Boy. <laughs> so, hmm. so anyway, so everybody who is confused, okay, what the fuck are you talking about? Just get to the point. Here's the point. Within the last, I, I, I guess it's been about a week now since uh, Governor Mike Pence of Indiana signed a controversial religious freedom bill into law. And reading here from the uh, Indy Star website, which is the, the local Indianapolis newspaper, uh, the nation's latest legislative battle over religious freedom and gay rights come to a, came to a close Thursday when Indiana Governor Mike Pence signed a controversial religious freedom bill into law. His action followed two days of intense pressure from opponents, including technology company executives and convention organizers, who feared the measure could allow discrimination, particularly against gays and lesbians. Pence and, and leaders of the Republican-controlled General Assembly called those concerns a misunderstanding. This bill is not about discrimination, Pence said, and if I thought it legalized discrimination, I would have vetoed it. Senate Bill 101, mm -hmm. Senate Bill 101 prohibits state or local governments from substantially bur burdening a person's ability to exercise their religion unless the government can show that it has a compelling interest and that the action is the least restrictive means of achieving it. It takes effect July 1st, so so it's not in effect yet. So it'll, but it will be in the middle of summer, right? In, right on time for Independence Day. Uh, well, I, I bet you he timed that on purpose. Yeah, well, it sounds like people aren't even like really waiting until the, the law goes into effect. They've just been you know going out of their way to discriminate already. Mm -hmm. uh, although the bill does not mention sexual orientation. Opponents fear it could allow business owners to deny services to gays and lesbians for religious reasons. Pence signed the bill during a private ceremony in his state house office just before 10 a.m. Thursday. He was joined by supportive lawmakers, Franci Franciscan monks and nuns, Orthodox Jews, and some of the state's most powerful lobbyists on conservative social issues. 
The event was closed to the public and the press. The bill signing makes Indiana the 20th state in the nation to, dis to adopt such legislation. It is modeled on the Federal Religious Fr Freedom Restoration Act, which President Bill Clinton signed in 1993. But the timing of the measure has colored the debate in Indiana. Social conservatives have pushed hard for such measures across the country following recent federal court rulings that legalize same-sex marriage in Indiana and other states. Many in Indiana also see the legislation as a reaction to last year's unsuccessful push to enshrine a same-sex marriage ban in the state's constitution. Three of the lobbyists who pushed hardest for last year's gay marriage ban, Micah Clark of the American Family Association of Indiana, Kurt Smith of the Indiana Family Institute, and Eric Miller of Advance America, were among the 70 to 80 guests invited to the private bill signing because they obviously all agree with him. That's, good, that's a good thing about bill signings, you know, you can invite who you want, it's a little party. Uh, it is vitally important to protect religious freedom in Indiana, Miller said in a statement after the bill signing. It, it was therefore important to pass Senate Bill 101 in 2015 in order to help protect churches, Christian businesses, and individuals from those who want to punish them because of their biblical beliefs. <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, I'm shaking my head. Yeah, punishing yeah, it's them. just punishing it, them. Uh, I, sir, I don't think that word means what you think it means. No, <laughs> nobody is punishing you for your beliefs. Your beliefs. <laughs> Having to provide a service that you don't want to provide is not punishment. It is your job. And if you don't do your <laughs> job, people get, have the right to say, you know what, we don't want we don't want to do business with you. Well, except for in Indiana, where it's not your job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because oh. apparently, you know, religion trumps all, which it's not supposed to. Not not on a grand measure, not on a big scale like this. Individually, if your religion trumps, well, I would say most, then you know, yeah, in in things that are still legal, but. You know, yeah, that, that's a whole other can of worms right there. Socially conservative advocacy groups were joined by the Catholic Church, Indiana Right to Life, and many evangelical Christians in supporting the measure. But Pence rejected suggestions that SB 101 was a consolation prize for conservative, adv conservative ad advocacy groups, I can read today, who failed to pass the gay marriage ban last year. I think that is inaccurate, he said. This was overdue. Oh... And it just goes on and on. Wow, I really picked a long one for the first one here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but a lot of the, a lot of the stuff this does go on. We we can we can also talk about in in terms of of just a lot of the backlash that has gone on. So what this act is is supposed to do is like is basically say, okay, you know what? If you have a deeply held religious belief then you know state can't touch you that's what i'm gathering from it and that could also mean discrimination um you know this says hey you know what i don't want say gay people in my bakery so the government can't do anything because that is my deeply held belief that gay people are an abomination therefore i don't have to serve them and it, and it doesn't even have to stop there. There are some people that might extend it to black people or to Jewish uh, no. people. And exactly. You can you can justify anything under you know the guise of you know this is my religious you know b belief to to operate a, a business that is free from those damn black people. I mean gay people, right? Uh huh. Totally. Or you could even or you could even go more absurd. There's like oh god, there's actually one we can. I actually do have the story here. Yes. One that, one that we picked up from Raw Story, um, where somebody's already starting to take advantage of this whole religious freedom thing in the way that, that Penny Boy probably does not expect. It's beautiful. It, it is. Yeah, this, this was really <laughs> amazing. Yes. Because this, this is nothing if not religious liberty or li religious freedom to operate your own business, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, we got it from Raw Story. Whoops. Indiana's Anti-Gay Religious Freedom Act opens the door for the chur first church of cannabis. Yes. Hey. <laughs> I, I want to join that church. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> in a classic case of unintended consequences, the recently signed Religious Freedom Restoration Act in Indiana may have opened the door for the establishment of the first church of cannabis in the Hoosier State. While Governor Mike Pence was holding a signing ceremony for the bill allowing businesses and individuals to deny services to gays on religious grounds or values, paperwork for the First Church of Cannabis, Inc. was being filed with the Secretary of State's office, reports RTV6. 
Church founder Bill Levin announced on his Facebook page that the church's registration has been approved, writing, <laughs> status, approved by Secretary of State of Indiana. Congratulations, your registration has been approved. Now we begin to accomplish our goals of love, understanding, and good health. And getting all the munchies that we possibly can. <laughs> nah. Levin is currently seeking $4.20 donations towards his nonprofit church. Ha 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 ha. Yes. Oh. According to Indiana attorney and political commentator Abdul Hakim Shabazz, Indiana legislat legislators, in their haste to protect the religious values and practices of their constituents, may have unwittingly put the state in an awkward position with those who profess to smoke pot as a religious sacrament. Shabazz pointed out that it is still illegal to poke smoke pot in Indiana, but wrote, I would argue that under RFRA, as long as you can show that reefer is part of your religious practices, you got a pretty good shot of getting off scot-free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Noting that the uh... RFRA supporters say the bill only spells out a test as to whether a government mandate would unduly burden a person's faith, and the government has to articulate a compelling interest for that rule and how it would be carried out in the least restrictive manner, Shabazz contends the law may tie the state's hands. So with that said, what compelling interest would the state of Indiana have to prohibit me from using marijuana as part of my religious practice, he asked. I would argue marijuana is less dangerous than alcohol and wine used in religious ceremonies. Marijuana isn't any more addictive than alcohol and wine is used in some religious ceremonies. And marijuana isn't any more of a gateway drug than the wine used in a religious ceremony will make you go out and buy hard liquor, at least not on Sunday. Shabazz concluded, I want a front row seat at the trial that we all know is going to happen when all this goes down. So I, do I. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I will you have know popcorn. That, you know that this is going to go to trial. This is not going to go uncontested. And yeah. That yeah. Everything that happens during that trial is going to bring it to light everything that's fucked up about this bill. Yeah, and 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 even during the week, uh, uh, Penny Boy was brought on to, to the – to the news and he was asked to clarify like okay um you would what do you what do you say is, is it's gonna be a religious thing are people gonna discriminate because of this uh and he's like uh, uh um um hamster jelly i don't know um makes just as much sense really <laughs> uh. my favorite was hoosiers don't discriminate really 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 <laughs> nobody in your entire state discriminate that's bullshit Okay. Yeah. Well, considering, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty obvious considering that there was that one business owner who I I think he he opted to remain anonymous, not surprisingly, mm -hmm. who went on uh, like a radio show and stated that he would be proudly turning away gay people because of this new this bill. Yeah. And it's like, well, yeah, I can tell why you didn't want to identify yourself because, quite frankly. If you did identify yourself there, you know what would happen. It'd go online, it'd get passed around by 4chan, something awful, Reddit, and all those all those sites, and you would go out of business in about a week. Yeah, that that would that would definitely be a a bad idea for you. Uh, mm -hmm. so yes, uh, but the uh, interview where where we talk about uh, uh, Penny Boy here. Trying, trying and failing, I guess, to defend the religious liberty law, uh, got from thinkprogress.org. And yeah, we're, we're just bouncing around on all these links today. Uh, and he defended a religious liberty law he signed on Sunday, saying that tolerance was a two-way street, and the law was about protecting religious people from government overreach. I it's, love that, too, that, that phrase, tolerance is a two-way street. Yeah. Fine. What? <laughs> right. No, no it, like, if I'm going to tolerate you, all all that has to happen is I have to tolerate you. Yeah. yeah. You don't have you, to tolerate you, me back. You, you could be a dick. Yeah. You tolerate the fact that we hate you, want you to go away, like, probably want to round you up into camps or something, even though we won't actually admit that. And uh, we'll tolerate the fact that you um, exist. That's that's a fair trade, right? I mean, we won't let you into our businesses, but we'll we'll tolerate your 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 mere existence, and you know, <laughs> yeah, let them eat cake that we, <laughs> that we that we don't want anymore. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Pence said he he was going to appear on the Sunday news show to clarify the intent of the law. Instead, he refused repeatedly to say if the law would greenlight discrimination against people based on their sexual orientation in the state. 
which tells me that that's exactly why he signed it into law. That's why they were pushing it, because they want to discriminate against people, in this case, gay people, you know, or, or, or better yet, non-heterosexuals. And it's because I'm pretty sure it doesn't have to be just gay people. I'm pretty sure it extends far, far in, in out, outside the heteronormative area that he likes to reside in. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Uh, just, so. just to, I actually just had an idea, and this is actually probably kind of a bad idea, but I think that if it happened, it would definitely highlight how messed up this bill is. And what if there was um, an African American couple mm-hmm. uh, that opened up a ba- like a shop, like say a bakery or something, and refused to serve white people because of their religious beliefs? Oh, how nuts do you think? The, the people of Indiana would, would get, like the white people, or just white people in general. Like, how do you think Fox News would react to that? Oh, God. I I am, bo- I am both kind of scared and also really, really wanting to see this and grab some popcorn. I, I honestly, as much as I said, I, I, I was like, that would be something to witness. I kind of hope that doesn't happen because that would be a nightmare for the people who did that. They would get their, their they, 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 would, they would be the subject of assault. Like, yeah, without question, they would they would get they would they would have their docs dropped. They would get tracked to their home. They would probably, in all honesty, end up suffering severe bodily harm, if not outright death as a result of this. And that's not something I want anybody to go through. Yeah. But if it happened, it would definitely highlight how fucked up this bill is. Oh, yeah. I mean, and oh, to take it into another direction as well, you know, not just black people discriminating against against whites. What about straight people? Or not, not not straight people, but non-straight people discriminating against straight people. Oh man, yeah. There's that one too. So it's like, holy shit! That, that see, it can go both ways, Penny Boy. See, yeah. See, see, you 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 are, are narrow-minded. You're thinking, okay, we got to keep Christianity in control. We've got to keep the these these old white waspy motherfuckers in in charge here. Never mind the fact that what you're signing into law can backfire and bite you in the ass. Yeah. Oh, because we don't. Oh. We, we can't stop gay people from existing, but we can at least try and make sure that we don't. You know, we we can just block them out of our minds and be like, oh, but they don't exist, right? They're, we don't see them in our stores. The, yeah. the article that we started out with made a good point, and that this is largely in reaction to the fact that gay marriage didn't get banned in Indiana, and that yeah. I mean, that's sort of the whole purpose behind this. Yeah, you can get married theoretically. But now nobody has to grant you a ceremony. Yeah, well, you know what? All the government has to do is grant them a license, and there you go. That that. But the gover- But nobody in the government can be forced to do that now. That's the problem. Ah. Yeah. So yeah. yes, in theory, you can get you can get married, but whoever works at the the office can say, "Well, this is against my religious beliefs. I don't believe in this. I can't do it." Okay, yeah, which, which as I have mentioned several, many times before on previous shows here and on Thespian Talk and everywhere else, that's fucking bullshit, because you, you know, the government, you know, you know, you want religious freedom, you, you want to make a statement, yeah, you know, we want to protect religious freedom, fine, except religion does not fall into your, your, your job description unless you are a member of a church, if you're a member of a church, that's a whole different story. And even then, you have to f- follow by certain guidelines set down by the government. I, I think what was it? Wasn't it like some kind of Bible verse that says, "Render unto Caesar what is Caesar's" or whatever, you know? And I think that one was probably talking about more taxes or anything. But that also says to me that yeah, you know, you're you're in you are in Caesar's land. You are you are in his his country. You should follow his rules. You're in his house. Follow his goddamn rules. And his rules say, don't fucking discriminate. That's how it should be. But you got Penny Boy here wanting to go and change all that because he's he's a, he's a slimy, old, wrinkly, white bigot. Well, uh, okay, again, this is pro- part of the problem with Indiana and this law. Yeah. He's not changing any of the laws of, of Indiana. Right. The fact is, it's always been legal to discriminate based on sexual orientation in Indiana. They don't right. have any laws that say you can't. And that's, yeah, it's and that's it's what like the you... Think Progress article and, and that video clip is talking about, mm-hmm. is that 
it's always been legal to do so. And that's the difference between this law and this, what is being called the same law in 20 other states is that most of these other states have laws that say you can't discriminate some on somebody based on sexual orientation. Mm-hmm. And some of them even go as far as to say gender. Yeah. It just depends on where you live. Right. Uh, so, yeah, that, that that actually is something I didn't even think about. That's like, yeah, so so in other words, he's not only doing that, but he's being redundant as fuck. I th- I yeah. From what I'm gathering. Like, there's no law that makes, you know, what we're doing illegal – but, you know, here, here's another one that says, yeah, go ahead, you can do it. Totally. Yeah, oy, like, so, so not only is, is he showing himself to be a, a major fucking homophobic bigot, he's being redundant, and, he, and of course, being redundant, all those, all those hours writing the bill, getting the bill, where is, that, where, where is the money coming from for it? You know, taxpayer dollars are, have to be paid to keep the lights on and, and all of that. To begin with, so you know, you know, some of the taxpayers are paying for basically wasted time, so this guy can show, hey, I'm a bigot. That's that's what I'm getting at. Something that I just actually really, I just thought about that I think is really insidious that it's still a thing that goes on in the era of the internet, and not even just the internet. C-SPAN's been around for decades, so this really shouldn't even be a thing. Signing a bill that affects everybody in the state behind closed doors in a private ceremony that's not yeah. open to the public what the hell yeah i i uh, every time i hear about that thankfully i've heard of it few and far between i know i've i'm pretty sure i've heard of it like in in recent years within the past decade for sure and every time it comes up it's like why you got to make it private you 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 are you are afraid of course now that it's out now that it's been made into law you see we see why he kept it private because he knew there would have been protesters there. There probably would have been disruptions, and of course he couldn't have that. So we can't. Well, have there's already people. been a picture going around of of this signing that took place. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because despite the fact that it was behind closed doors, there's still pictures of it, and it's like three of the guys in in that picture are like very anti-gay, anti-LGBT, like, have said some pretty awful, like, truly atrocious things about gays and and the kinds of laws they want to pass. And so it's like, yeah, of course you didn't want people to know, and you didn't want people there, because he didn't, he's trying to say, oh, well, but this doesn't have anything to do with gay people. Really? Well, uh, the crowd around you says otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. Like- the crowd around you and the fact that you just didn't want anybody to know that this was going on until it, you know, actually happened. Yeah, <laughs> it really does mm. not support your argument. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's just, just more and more that Penny Boy is a dick. Mm. And, and, and in case there's any doubt, there is another article on Think Progress um, called The True Intent of Indiana's Religious Freedom Bill According to the People Who Helped Write It. So if if there's any doubt, this article will will help dispel them, one way or the other. Ah. Indiana Governor Mike Pence and state Republican leaders have been playing damage control this week, claiming that the Religious Freedom Restoration Act is not a law that enables anti-LGBT discrimination. Meanwhile, however, the conservatives who advocated for the bill have been spurning this attempted walk back, asserting in the process that the goal was ensuring discrimination all along. At the forefront of the conservative reaction is Micah Clark, who serves as executive director for the American Family Association of Indiana, who stood right behind Pence as he signed the bill. Speaking Monday to Tim Wildman, head of the National American Family Association, Clark explained that conservatives should oppose any effort to clarify that the law does not legalize discrimination. That could totally destroy this bill, he explained. Oh, so if you clarify that it's not... That it, it, it does not legalize discrimination, that would destroy your bill. That tells me right off the bat that the bill is meant to discriminate. That's what you're meant to do. Meant, it's meant to outright say, even though it is technically legal to already do so, the government is basically saying, yeah, go out and do it. You know, we got your back. You know, you're yeah. a religious person? You're a religious person? Okay, go out, right, you do your back, you know. 
Well, which... no, no, it's even more disgusting than we can't stop you. It's like, well, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, go ahead and do it, and we we can't do anything about it. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we have we have effectively tied our own hands behind our back, so uh, you know. Oops! Oops. Oh darn! Oh, Looks oh, like dear. we can't stop your discrimination. Not oh, that it's okay, no. but seriously, we can't stop you. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Clark has been publicly advocating for the bill as a means for allowing an anti-LGBT discrimination since December, long before the legislation was even drafted. This directly contradicts the claims made Monday by House Speaker Brian Bosma and Senate President Pro Tem David Long that the legislation never had anything to do with discrimination. Lying assholes. Eric Miller, executive director of Advance America, is another anti-LGBT activist who stood by Pence as he signed the bill. Advance America praised Pence for signing the bill last week, openly stating that it would allow wedding vendors to refuse service to same-sex couples and allow Christian businesses to refuse transgender people access to restrooms. And even more bullshit is coming out of this. Guys, guys, you, I, I, I think... I think certain aspects of of just the conservative movement, they're, they're not even, you know, some of them are, are trying to cover it up, obviously. Then you have guys like this who are like, yeah, um, we, we, this is what we want to do. This is what we want because, you know, gay people and transgender people are yucky. That's right. Isn't that true? Isn't that true? Meanwhile, the rest of the country looks ready to, about ready to smack them upside the head with a 4x4. Four four. You know? Pretty much. God, I remember... Um... And I'm not the, I'm not a huge fan of Bill Maher anymore, but I remember um, back during uh, one of those new rules segments, he was talking about gay marriage and just uh, how or not, not about gay marriage, just about how Christ, uh, a lot of Christians or like creationist Christians in general are so willing to talk about biblical this and that and use it to try and justify things today. And one of the, the points he made was like, you know, and Jesus never said a word about gay marriage. He was much too busy hanging out with twelve guys. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, so yes. Miller Miller was quoted as saying, It is vitally important to protect religious freedom in Indiana. It's the right thing to do. It was therefore important to pass Senate Bill 101 in 2015 in order to help protect churches, Christian businesses, and individuals. And we, we quoted this earlier. Uh, Vincent and Miller, it turns out, go way back. On the national stage, conservatives are similarly defending the RFRA and arguing it needs no fixing. Andrew Walker, Director of Policy Studies for the Southern Baptist Convention's Ethics and Religious Liberty Commission, perhaps best summed up the distortion conservatives are using to argue that it's not discriminatory. A wedding vendor who chooses not to service a same-sex wedding is not discriminating against a person's being. Instead, the vendor believes that ma material cooperation in a particular event encroaches on his conscience. To give relief to a particular wedding vendor who feels uncomfortable servicing a gay wedding isn't in any way comparable to state-sponsored discrimination. To require a wedding vendor to service a same-sex wedding is not eliminating discrimination against the gay couple. It's coercing the wedding vendor. Well, legally, you know, you know in, an, uh, in an ideal legal setting, you would not – you would not legally be allowed to discriminate. You should not be legally allowed to discriminate on, on, on certain things. You are a wedding vendor. Your job is to provide a wedding for people. And if you don't do that for people, people are not going to come to you, and you are going to sit there and lose all of the money. You know, And that just goes for any other business. Discrimination, yeah, in Indiana, discrimination may not be legal, and it's even more legal now because the state, as, as you mentioned earlier, you know, tied their own hands up. Yeah, it doesn't mean it's going to be good for business. So if for no other reason, not discriminating is a good business practice. Yeah, well, I mean, I think it speaks a lot for the, the character of whoever is owning the business, too. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, sure, you might be uncomfortable with the idea of gay people, you know, and gay people getting married. I mean, I, you know, when I first heard about the concept of homosexuality when I was younger, I was no, you know, I was kind of weirded out by it at first, but then I just, as I got older, I realized, well, I guess people just feel that way. And, you know, people are always, you know, it's, you know, the, the laws of attraction are not as black and white as everybody seems to want to, you know, make us believe. And yeah, it's like, I honestly just think that if 
if it's like even if you are still grossed out by it or just weirded out by it, or you think that it's that there's something wrong with it, I honestly think just being the bigger person and going out on a limb to say like, hey, you know, I might not agree with you, but you guys obviously seem all right, so here you go, you know. Yeah, exactly. Here it is. It, it's basically the way my mother thinks about homosexuality. She believes it's a sin. She believes gay people will be going to hell or whatever, but she's also not going to really speak out against them, and she's not going to tell them, you know, like if she ran a shop or whatever, she's not going to turn them away type thing. She has her beliefs, but that doesn't determine how she reacts when she has to deal with them in a business setting or any other setting because, you know, my mother is actually a decent goddamn human being, Yeah. You know? unlike fuckers like this. Well, and also sort of going back to the, the issue of transgender people and, you know, being denied access to bathrooms, it's like, well, thank you. That wasn't hard enough for them already. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's just, ugh. I mean, and I, I've, and honestly, it took me a, 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 a good deal longer to understand, you know, the concept of what it means to be transgendered, mm-hmm. because it's, it's just, it seems very weird. I remember watching stories on it about how, like, there are these two kids that were born, I think they were twins, um, they might have been born, like, you know, a little ways apart, but I think they were twins, and one of them very clearly said, you know, that, that they identified as a girl, even though they were both you know, born boys. Mm-hmm. And he said, like, I, I know that I'm, I'm, I'm a girl on the inside. It's just how it is. And then it's like, well, that's something that's kind of weird. Cause I was born a, um, a boy and I, I still am for all intents and purposes. Yeah. So like, it took me a while to really kind of get that. But then I got to the point, it's like, you know what, if a person is willing to radically alter their appearance and, you know, their, you know, the, the image that they present themselves to the world, even to the point of getting, reconstructive surgery then i think that they probably that's what they identify as yeah and yeah just why just are you there. trying to debate that it's just like oh they're just trying to seek attention oh they're just confused they're just blah blah they went to the po- they, they went to the trouble of putting themselves under the knife to change themselves into who they feel like they are who are you to tell them they're not that person exactly you know and and you know what even even if we if, even if we gave them that 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 say oh they're just looking for attention what if they are so what doesn't you know doesn't make them any less valid you know if if they want to you know if they're not harming my my big rule of thumb if they're not harming anybody who the fuck cares all right they're Maybe not they're looking anybody. for attention because for generations and upon generations they've been swept under the rug and outright just murdered as a result of being who they are. So yeah, maybe they are craving attention so they can say, hey, we all exist, people. Don't try and shut us out. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's just, ah! Uh, but there's more. <laughs> oh, God. Walker is simultaneously admitting that the law is designed to allow businesses to discriminate against LGBT people while denying that it's actually discrimination that's taking place. Radio host Brian Fisher, oh, this guy, formerly Mm -hmm. of the American Family Association, took the Christian self-victimization a step further. This law is not something that provides for discrimination against gays, he explained. It is something that prevents discrimination against Christians. This thing is an anti-discrimination bill because it prohibits governmental discrimination against Christians in the state of Indiana. Because, yeah, Christians are just so disproportionately discriminated against. Yeah. Oh, so There's much. There's so much discrimination against Christians. I, mm. I, you know, I just... Uh, yeah. Every day, I'm like, are you a Christian business? Oh, I can't shop here. God, uh, looking at the dollar, looking at your money and being like, in God we trust? Why can't it say, in Jesus Christ, Lord's name we trust? Yeah. That, that's that, I mean, that's just unfair, right? I mean, God could apply to any religious, you know, deity. I mean, we, we want... No. Okay, I'm getting a little more uh, <laughs> a little more Get... specious in my arguing there, arguing there, but I mean, still, come on, people. Yeah, it's just, just again, in this country, Christianity, Christians in general, they are not discriminated against, not to the degree that other groups are. There may be some, maybe it's you know, more inter interfaith discrimination, but in, and even then, it's nowhere near. To the degree that gay people are discriminated against, that black people are dis- discriminated against, that trans people are discriminated against, that it's it's nowhere near that particular degree. That even people of other re- religions are discriminated against. I don't know if you mentioned exactly. that, but I mean, like, yeah, what if, what if a Muslim uh, couple decided to open a bakery in Indiana and refused to serve Christians, going back to what I was saying? How do you think that would go down? 
Oh, they with... they probably wouldn't even go. They probably just go straight to blow the fuckers up. Yeah, probably. they wouldn't even. They probably wouldn't even get their business license. Oh yeah, if delis just stopped serving people who are not Jewish. Ooh. Sorry, can't serve you. You're you're not God's chosen people. Yeah. yeah. Oh, look at this new shipment of ham we got and bacon too. Mm. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah, it's just that, I. Yeah, it's it's stupid. Oh. <laughs> so so now that we now that we have we we basically basically have the the whole idea behind the thing that it is at at at, at best redundant at worst opening the door to so much more discrimination while the government ties up its own hands. Well, there have been a lot of people backing, you know, backlashing against this, us included, of course. And one of them is Gen Con. Gen Con, for those who don't know, is, I believe it is the largest gaming convention that is based in Indianapolis. Uh, it goes there every year. In fact, I, I got to see a little bit of Gen Con one year. Uh, and it, and it, looks, it looked like it was a lot of fun. I wish I could have went for the whole time, but, you know... I was driving at the time, but uh, one of them I got from the uh, Mary Sue, and it read the title reads: Gen Con response to Indiana passing religious freedom bill, moving ahead with discussions to leave the state. After Indiana passed a heinous religious freedom bill yesterday, allowing business owners to deny same-sex couple service, Gen Con CEO and founder Adrian Star Swart out it, I think, yeah. Okay. Issued a letter to con attendees promising that discussions whether to remain in Indy or move elsewhere have begun in light of the hateful new law. The announcement comes after Swartout, 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 published an open letter earlier this week asking, asking. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's like Beetlejuice. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> He's yes. going to pop into your living room now. Yeah, <laughs> pop in my living room, scare the fuck out of my mother. <laughs> there you go. And then just kicks over, like, your uh, whatever's in your room. Nice fucking model! Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, but he published an open letter earlier this week asking Indiana Governor Mike Pence to veto the bill as legislation that could allow for refusal of service or discrimination against our attendees – will have a direct negative impact on the state's economy and will factor into our decision-making on hosting the convention in the state of Indiana in future years. They have a contract with Indiana through 2020, but as Swartow wrote yesterday, planning for a potential out-of-state move for 2021 needs to start five years prior to a contract term commencement. In the meantime, Swartout emphasizes that cons leading up to 2021 will be inclusive and fun and reassures attendees that the Indianapolis business community is not in favor of the state's decision. We've received hundreds of messages from industry members and Indianapolis companies doubling down on their support to welcome all Gen Con attendees. The open letter also details a feedback system whereby attendees can record their experiences at local businesses and offer several ways that concerned members of the con community can contact Swartout to share their opinions on the issue. Prospective attendees, if you don't feel comfortable attending based upon your principles, we invite you to make the the decision that feels right for you, your business, or group. We support your decision regardless of the outcome. Kudos to Swartout for working with local business owners to protest this new legislator, legislature rather, and for setting up a system whereby attendees can be heard. If Gen Con does decide to leave Indiana, they've definitely proved themselves worth of worth following. I was about to say worthy of following. I'm reading what I want. So yeah, you are in danger of Gen Con, which, from what I understand, they bring in like millions into the Indiana state economy with this thing. And that's not just you know paying for the convention center and, and the stuff around that. That's also going to local businesses that are around there. Yeah, the the Circle Center Mall is like a couple of blocks away from there, and I know people are most likely going over there. Check that out. They've got an arcade up in there. They've got all these different stop shops they can go to. They've got local shops around the area, and yeah. Yeah, I don't really think people uh, who who don't go. I mean. To be fair, I've only been to one convention in my life, but I don't think people who go to who don't go to conventions realize just how many people show up to them on average and how much money they can make for the surrounding area. Like, I I can't even imagine how much money National Harbor made during Magfest this year. Oh, there I were know, right? so many people there. <laughs> oh, I know, right? Oh, I mean, I, 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 I wasn't able to make it this time, but you know, last time I went, yeah, lots of people. Granted, lots. it's it's. It's nowhere near the amount of people that was like at New York Comic Con, which oh, I can't even imagine. 
which even then is like you know something that size anywhere is going to be good for the local economy, whether it's city local or state local or what have you. That particular area is going to be really good. <laughs> They're going yeah. to love you, and they will want you to come back, especially if you are a su- successful convention. And when when Penny Boy pulled this bullshit, he's he he fell in danger of of Gen Con leaving and saying, yeah, we're going to leave. We're going to take all our money with us. That means your economy is going to take a hit if if this d- bullshit doesn't turn around by the time we start negotiating new contracts. So, yeah. Well, that's already a disappointment because when he started out, it wasn't, you know, well, when, when we negotiate a new contract, it was, if you guys pass this law, we're leaving the state. And then he turned around and was like, well, except for, you know, we have this contract and then so we're going to stay for now. But seriously, if you guys don't like he he's lost all his power in this argument because he backed yeah. down. Yeah, pretty much. I will I will I can understand why he would make the turnaround because contracts from what I understand that could be depending on I don't know the Right, but he just shouldn't have said it in the first place. That that I can agree with. Like I, if he had never intended to be willing to break the contract, then he he shouldn't have said it. Yeah. So, oh, lordy lordy lordy. But and even then, there's even there's been, been a lot of other people speaking out about it. Of course, a lot of celebrities, George Takei being one of them, of course. I, I think Miley Cyrus has spoken out against it. Hmm. I don't want to say – I want to say Seattle has prohibited their city employees or, 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 or what have you from taking paid trips to Indiana, like like on their government dime or whatever. I know and, San Francisco has. Okay, San Francisco, yeah. It was one of those, it was one of those uh, uh, cities out west. It started with an S. I got that right. But it's definitely one of them. Hmm. Uh, Lots of business also ha- businesses have also said, you know what? Nope, we're not sending anybody through there unless we absolutely have to. Yeah. Unless there's absolutely no way we can get around it. And, and I think, like, an entire state has said that they won't be sending employees there. Yeah, and I believe that's Connecticut. Is it Connecticut? I'm, I think so, yeah. I couldn't tell you for sure. <laughs> yeah. But, um... Well- but that's actually... pretty astounding when you really think about it that there's been such an enormous backlash, not just you know among like people within the state who are just like you know crying out not all Hoosiers, but um, just <laughs> don't get me also... started on that argument. Again. Not all <laughs> hashtag, Hoosiers. Hashtag not all Hoosiers. Oh God. Oh. You know exactly who you sound like when you say that not all Hoosiers, right? Yeah. Right? yeah. You sound like not all men. Yeah, just just a little bit there. Uh, uh, but you know, not just the yeah, you know, not just people in Indiana that are you know crying out and saying like, hey, we you know we don't all support this bill, uh, but that also just you know, states around you know states in the country and cities in the country are basically saying, yeah, we don't want to do business with you if this is the the tack you're going to take if you're going to you know enact a, a law that is very clearly meant to discriminate against you know LGBT people and you know, then do it in a closed ceremony where, you know, it just happens and then all of a sudden we're just like, wait, what? Yeah. Sorry. We we don't yeah, we don't we don't approve of that. So go do your thing without us. Yeah. And 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 you know what? I think I think I've happened upon another reason why they wouldn't want they wanted to have the closed doors or what have you. It's because what happened in Georgia afterwards uh, I know I'm, I know we talked about it at length on uh, Thespian Talk this week, but Georgia was trying to do something similar. But one of their more savvy, savvy politicians was like, wait a minute. This is going to be some bullshit, and we're already seeing part of the backlash coming back from Indiana. I'm going to slip this thing in. I, I don't remember the exact wording right off the top of my head, but if you listen to that particular show, it'll be there, which basically – basically gutted the bill and it, it'll never pass it's never going to leave the table or anything so it took one guy in georgia to to slip a little something in there that nobody's going to vote against nobody's going to do anything about it so the, the the georgia version of this particular bill is dead so and then that's probably why you know the indiana government kept it behind closed doors because they kept something like that from happening it's probably why uh which makes me wonder. But, uh, yeah, what else gets passed behind closed doors? Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, one one last news link involving all of this. Uh, I found this on pol- politic politic yeah politic politic USA uh, dot com, 
And the article headline reads, And Indiana lawmakers admit no gay signs will be allowed. Uh-oh. Americans, businesses, and cities condemned Indiana's RFRA ever since Governor Mike Pence signed it into law. Pence tried to claim his critics didn't understand the law, but that blew up in his face during a press conference. The House Speaker and the Senate pro tem admitted that no gay signs would be allowed in Indiana. Gee! Kind of like, kind of like the the old whites only signs and and, and colored only signs back in the fifties. It really uh, is amazing that the the irony of this situation is escaping these people. Uh huh. Yeah. Or even if they're not, even if even if it's not escaping them, that they're just like, well, this this won't this won't backfire in any way. This this will be great. This will just you know, I'll get to exercise my religious liberty. I mean, you know, just like the slave owners did when you know they were using the Bible to justify owning people. Uh, mm-hmm. Wait, hold on. I might, I might have gotten lost along the way there. <laughs> well, that's the thing. People people will try to use the Bible to justify just about goddamn anything. You know, during, you know, when the Civil War was going down, people used the Bible to justify both slavery and and ending slavery. You know, you've got people using the Bible to justify racism, justify homophobia, you to justify transphobia. You know, they will use it to justify anything. The and thing, just basic misogyny too. I mean, there you, you know, go. that was going to be my next one. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, like the the the, 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 the I, I can't remember where, where I've read this, but I've seen it several t- you know, around the internet a few times. It's like the the simple fact that you can't trade your daughter to some man for like a plot of land and five cows means we've already redefined marriage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we we keep redefining it. They they're just redefining it in a way that you guys don't want it to be redefined because for whatever reason you think that your marriage is going to be less valid. That means that tells me that you have very little faith in your union, which really actually kind of concerns me. It's like if you have that fa- little faith in your union, why the fuck are you married? Well, you there's know? always like a, a, something at, you know to, to 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 say about like any of these arguments pretty much. What uh, that. That just is like, well, yeah, but, if, but what about this between other people? Like, I think one of my favorite arguments is the whole, well, gay people can't have kids. And, you know, marriage is all about, you know, starting a family and blah, blah, blah. It's like, okay, first of all, no, marriage is not about starting a family. It's about joining with somebody so that you can, you know, work more efficiently with, you know, with each other, that you can get benefits on your taxes, that you can, you know, you know, have, you know, you can do all these things, and then you can be closer to that person. But what if you have two people who don't want kids, who yeah. have no interest in having kids, or help for that matter? What if they're sterile? What if they can't have kids? Yeah. They physically, then, and, and, but they have no desire to adopt either. Are you going to prohibit them from getting married simply because they're not about starting a family, even though they are? Yeah, I mean, it's like by that logic, there would be so many people. Oh God, I, I, oh hell. Just so many people who were like, yeah, we want to get married. We just don't want to have kids. We can't have kids. So many people would be like, ah, goddamn. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, a little bit further down in the article, it reads, uh, since Pence signed the law, backlash was swift. Hashtag, bo- hashtag boycott Indiana trended on Twitter for several days. I, I, I see – I remember a couple of my friends uh, actually saying, yeah, um, when I go through Indiana, I'm not stopping for anything. I'm not spending money there or anything. I'm just going to go pew, right on through, not even taking the fucking toll roads, just – uh. I'm just thinking like can you imagine the number of, of roads that are going to have like this many miles to Indiana? This is your last stop. Sign now, <laughs> like before you get on the tollway. How this is? It's always like this is the last exit before you get on the tollway. Yeah. <laughs> After that, you're gonna have to pay to get up. Now it's gonna be you're this many miles to Indiana. If you don't want to spend money in Indiana, you should probably spend it here. <laughs> and then oh when you actually God. do cross the border, you are now in Indiana. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I'm just imagining somebody coming from Ohio, cause, 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 I, I there'll probably be probably three or four exits before you reach Indiana. That uh, no wait, I think you would be able to have like like the very last exit before you enter Indiana. That would be fine. I don't remember how it is for the other ones though. I think coming from Illinois, uh, at least the way I would normally come back through uh, to Indiana through Illinois, I think it would be a little further back. I don't know why my mind just suddenly went there. I'm thinking of the logistics, and I need to go back to the article. Uh, Celebrities spoke out, of course. Angie's List was one of several businesses that registered their opposition to the law with their big corporate dollars. By the way, Angie's List, I believe, is based in Indianapolis. 
Just, just saying. Yeah. Uh, then the cities of San Francisco and Seattle oh, – hey, we were both right – announced that they would boycott the Hoosier state, and Connecticut was the first state to announce it would boycott Indiana. Uh, so yeah, Connecticut – yeah, we were, again, we were right, Connecticut there. Contrary to Pence's protests that critics just didn't understand the law, it is now abundantly clear that Pence's attempt at damage control was the epic fail of epic fails. Yeah. <laughs> It's just no, no, no. Just, just you guys. We see your true colors. You know, even Penny Boy is like, yeah, we're 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 gonna have a little clarification law put in, but it's a little late now. Now that the state's House Speaker has encouraged, you know, homophobic shop owners to let gays know their business is not wanted. Yeah, yeah, we 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 see your true colors. We really do. Mm hmm. Uh, and, and the article, of course, makes references to like the no blacks and Jews, or or no Jews and dogs, you know that sort of thing. What? Yeah, that's what it says in the article. No Jews and dogs. Huh. I I don't know. That's that's an interesting well, combination. Well, you know the the whole racism thing. It I, I'm I don't know. I mean, it's not that big of a stretch when you consider that. You know, Hitler and Goebbels' propaganda was basically, not not basically, it was literally trying to convince, you know, the, the people of Germany and of J just Europe that Jewish people were vermin. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, uh, uh, that doesn't seem like that big of a stretch, you know, when you consider just how virulent, you know, bigotry can get. Mm hmm Oh, so, but I'm, I'm just waiting, like, like the guy with the first church of... First Church of Cannabis, something like this gets off the ground, it's going to go to court, and it's going to be exposed even more. They're going to have more eggs on their faces, and if the voters of Indiana are smart, they're going to vote them out as soon as possible. Please! Well, yeah. okay, so that brings up the, the not all Hoosiers argument that I got into the other day. Oh, yeah. You, you, you actually so, sent me. You sent me. You sent me a link for this one. Uh, the uh, I think you found it what the indiechannel dot com, I believe, right? Yeah. The... <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> You're jumping ahead, though. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, um, but but the the thing is, a lot of first of all, Indiana is a Republican state. Mm -hmm. There, so there's as sad as it is, there's not a whole lot that's terribly surprising about the fact that this passed. Yeah. Um. And it's most people in Indiana don't vote. Yeah, which which is is, is the takeaway here. Mm. Um, you know, would it be nice if if people went and said, "Oh, we don't want you in office anymore"? Yeah, it would. Do I think it's terribly likely? No. Yeah. I, th I think somebody told me that only thirty percent of registered voters in Indiana vote. Yeah, and I will I will admit. That... I mean, that's that's pathetic. Yeah, that is, and I will. I am a bit ashamed to admit, even though it was ex extenuating circumstances, that I was not able to vote when I was in Indiana. But um, you know, like I said, extenuating circumstances. I'm still kind of ashamed to admit it. But you know, so I, I that that does shame me a little bit. But um, but you know what? If if it takes me back up there, or or wherever, I'm gonna you know be definitely making sure that extenuating circumstances don't apply and i made sure of that when i transferred my license down here to florida <laughs> so but even so there's there seems to be this prevailing thought in indiana that well I, i'm not responsible for these guys because i didn't vote for these guys yeah it's like and, and it's like well first of all um congrats for not voting for them but are you saying that like you didn't vote at all or you just voted against them. Like, if you voted for somebody else, then you have every right to complain, and I'm okay with that. If you did not vote, shove it. <laughs> yeah, so so it's kind of the anti-George yeah. Carlin there on that one. It's like, if you if you didn't vote, you don't have any right to complain, whereas his, his was the opposite. And that's one of those things where I will disagree with Carlin on. It, yeah. And agree more with you. It's like, yeah, you didn't vote when it's you like, could have. You, here's so, the thing. Voting no, is... Yeah. Yeah, voting is like the one thing that we the people have where we can actually affect some kind of change. Yeah. And you could argue it's just like, well, yeah, but there's all this stuff in place and the electoral college and, you know, corporate interests and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, okay, fine. That might all be true. 
doesn't mean you still can't go out there and exercise your goddamn civic duty because it's all you fucking got. Exactly. Yeah. So go and vote. It doesn't matter what you're voting for as long as you believe in it. And if you vote somebody in who does shit like this, well, yeah, it's your fault. And if you voted against the person who, you know, who didn't get it and then this shit happens, then you can say, hey, don't look at me. I voted for that guy. Exactly. Then you can pull your fucking no Hoosier, not all Hoosiers argument. There you yeah. go. <laughs> as stupid as it is, you can pull that argument and right. look like an idiot for doing it, but you can do it. Yeah. Because the, uh, the whole idea that not all Hoosiers, because uh, so uh, in listening to some of the stuff that Pence has had to say about it, uh, he says repeatedly the term Hoosier hospitality. And I'm like, uh, Hoosier hospitality. Hoosiers are famous for their hospitality. Hoosier hospitality. It's not just a motto. Hoosier hospitality. I'm like, I have oh, never really? in my life heard of Hoosier hospitality. First of all, uh, I would say... Uh, until this week, probably there was at least 50% of America that had no idea what a Hoosier was. Yeah. <laughs> I only knew what Hoosiers were because of the Gene Hackman movie, a movie I've never right. seen, but I know that. Yeah. <laughs> but, but still, then I was I mean... like, Hoosier hospitality, you say that like it's a well-known phrase, and it's not. Like, oh. for all I know, it's the state motto, but... Yeah, like, or he's just trying I, to make I, it I something that's a thing never now. heard of. Yeah. It's like, it's like he's trying to make it something like thing that's just like, you've never heard of Hoosier hospitality? Hoosier hospitality is the greatest thing. We've always had Hoosier hospitality. Hoosier hospitality has been around since Hoosiers, right? Somebody back right. up here, guys. Yeah, and you know what? Coming from a guy who lived in Indiana, let's see. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Last time I was there, let's see. That was, what, 2010, 2012. So about two years. And then however long it was I was there as a kid, probably about, uh, let's say, six or seven years. So let's say close to a decade in Indiana over my lifetime. I had never heard of who's your hospitality. Yeah. And, and bear in mind, I've been in the, been living in Indiana, had lived in Indiana quite a while. And and who's your hospitality is bullshit anyways, and I will give you I will give you something that would definitely you know, you know blow that out of the water. Uh, when I had lost my job with with the driving company, I uh, you know, I had to try and fall back on donating blood plasma because, well, we need a little bit of money coming in, and my last check was not going to last forever. Well, I went, and they said, well, you got this thing you need to go get cleared or what have you, and I went, and they pointed me to this clinic. I said, okay, well, I'll go. I went to this clinic. They were supposed to do it for free, and everything seemed to be fine and checked out everything, and then they denied me. That they denied giving me a physical to clear me for plasma donation because supposedly too many people had been coming in and doing it. And I'm like, oh, fuck you. So because you have too many people coming in, getting cleared for something that they do to, you know, maybe help make ends meet a little bit, maybe for a little bit of extra spending money, and make it less convenient because at the time the plasma center I was using was clear across town. You know, it took me about maybe an hour, hour and a half to get there on the bus, which, well, that's the only way I had to go. And 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 so to tell me, like, yeah, you you you, you know, we're going to inconvenience you a little more because we're inconvenienced by all these people coming in and getting these free checkups. It's like, yeah, who's your hospitality, my ass? I mean, uh, and, and it's like, it, so the governor isn't the only person who's who's like, well, Hoosiers don't discriminate because this argument that I got into, which, which wasn't even really an argument. I said one thing and this person just like flipped out. Oh, I, I, I honestly couldn't believe it. I was like, but that's that's not what I said. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, uh, uh, but it, it, people keep saying, well, Hoosiers don't discriminate. Well, Hoosiers are really nice people. Well. Uh, sorry, but the rest of the country hasn't heard about that. And in yeah. fact, now you can talk about the article. Yes. It's now we have not the true at all. <laughs> yeah. In fact, according to this article on the IndieChannel.com, which is a, a an actual local, another local indie news station, um, Indiana residents are among the least courteous in the U.S., according to a call advertising firm's analysis of more than 600,000 phone calls. Uh, the mayor... Mar Markex Institute study ranked all 50 states based on, use, based on usage of the words please and thank you. Indiana ranked third least courteous in the study, with Wisconsin, <laughs> yeah, with Wisconsin and Massachusetts ranking first and second, respectively. I can see that. For the, you know, 
even even outside of my limited view, I can see that because bear in mind my viewpoint when it comes to dealing with Indiana people in general is usually on the bus, and people are very thankful to the bus driver. Most mm -hmm. of them will say your your thank yous and everything. So, but still, there's a lot of other people that probably would just be like, oh, okay, whatever, you know, and 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 all of that. And yeah. <laughs> Third least courteous. Holy shit. That's uh, Hoosier hospitality. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. And and it says here Tennessee ranked fourth and Ohio in fifth. So you have the third and fifth right next to each other. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I and I traveled to both extensively. Um, Basically, most... all all non courteous people in the U.S. live relatively close to each other, with the exception of Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah. So. But the most courteous states, according to the study, study rather, were both of the Carolinas, Maryland, Louisiana, and Georgia. Louisiana, Ooh. the same state that where where Governor Jindal is is fucking up all that shit. They're also very hospitable, apparently, or very oh, very courteous, <laughs> apparently. Uh, I believe that. I mean, like you know, Southern hospitality is a thing that I right. don't think of at yeah. least. So, yeah, I could believe that. You know, Louisiana and Georgia are like two of the most courteous states in the country, even if, oh. you know, they're probably got other issues going on. But, right. you know, oh, I, can, yeah. I can imagine that they're at least nice about it. Yeah, yeah everybody's sir and ma'am and, you know. Yeah. That, that makes sense to me. But I was like, who's your hospitality? Is that is that actually a thing? Because I've never heard of it. Right. It's like, I, I haven't heard it either. Oh, so. So one, one last thing from this article I want to pull before we, we get out of here for this week. Uh, the study also examined each state's use of curse words, finding Ohio had the most people, people using profanities, followed by Maryland, New Jersey, Louisiana, and Illinois. <laughs> hey. So, so I, 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 I think I can attest a little bit to Ohio. <laughs> Although they probably – I think somebody was following me around when I was driving through Ohio recently – well, not recently, as in like in the past year, but you know when I was driving, you know, because hey, <laughs> uh, traffic in Columbus can be shit sometimes. Mm. Mm. Uh, so with that, uh, last thoughts on this whole thing. Um, for me, my last thoughts on this, yes, this this whole thing. I'm just waiting again. Like I said earlier, I'm waiting for the first Church of Cannabis thing to go to court and see all of this exposed, and then something be done. Um. And, and this whole thing is bullshit anyway. I myself, I've been wanting to – I'm trying to get the hell back out of Florida again. I'm really wanting to go to Chicago. I was thinking about Indiana, Indianapolis as kind of a backup, but now I'm not so sure. <laughs> uh, so, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, oh, oh, and one last thing I did forget. I don't think I put it in any articles or, or if it's in any of the articles. It might be. I don't know. But uh, the mayor of Indianapolis has actually signed an anti-discrimination bill. If I remember right, or he's at least called out against it. So <laughs> you got the mayor of Indianapolis calling out against it. So maybe, maybe Indy may not be such a bad idea after all. Who knows? Yeah, the mayor of the capital city going like, guys, what are you doing? Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, that goes to the comments that I had on when I was talking about the argument, which was that basically a lot of people in Indy specifically don't realize that they live in a Republican state. I yeah. was like, really? How do, how do you not know that like you're the one sane corner of the world? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. How, yeah. how is that something you're unaware of? Like, as an Iowan, I realized that everybody else who lives on the west side of the state is insane. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like it'd be like if people in my hometown got surprised every election year that Alaska went, you know, red. So it's like, you, you, this is not news. Yeah, like, this is, I mean, like, yeah, we we might live in a fairly liberal, you know, left leaning community, but that doesn't represent all of the state. Yeah, well, exactly. I mean, even even in Iowa, when when things happen, like when Joni Ernst got elected, that was that was still news because, despite the fact that we're a very progressive state, we're also very much a purple state. <laughs> like, we'll go either yeah. way. <laughs> yeah, we we're we're really unsure. Like. We definitely believe in your right to do insert thing here, but <laughs> um, when it comes to our elected officials, we're like, eh. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I, and I admit, it, it, it is easy to forget that when you're in the middle of Indianapolis, because holy shit. <laughs> oh, but yeah, those are my last thoughts. Uh, Holly, what about yours? Do you have any final thoughts before we get out of here? Uh, yeah, there's there's been a lot of talk about this bill and about, you know, what it actually says. And it's true. The language of this bill is nothing to be concerned about, and it, it's really not the problem. The problem is people have been calling this uh, – there's one blog in particular that's been going around that's saying, well, it's just restating the law. It's like retweeting the law. Yeah, but you retweeted the law to make a specific point – in regards to another law that was just passed. So it's like, yeah, okay, do I disagree with the law on its face? No. No, I don't, because they're, you know, it, I don't think the government should be able to tell you what to do as far as your religion goes. Right. However, um, the problem is, is that they don't have um, discrimination laws regarding um, orientation or gender in Indiana, and that's a problem. Yeah. And this law was just essentially retweeted to say, well, you can get married if you can find someone to do it. Yeah. Oh God, I'm just Im I'm just imagining Penny Boy, get, you know, getting one of those fake mustaches and twirling it now. It's like if you can find somebody. <laughs> oh yeah. God. Very if you can you. find somebody who's willing to do the paperwork for you. Congratulations, you can get married. But nobody has to. Yeah. Ah, uh, so, so yeah. Gonzo, any last thoughts? Well, I don't know. I mean, I think we pretty much got, you know, covered most of most of it. But, I mean, I'll just say again that this, I, I just, I just don't think that this is going to last. I really think that, I mean, I it, given the way attitudes are shifting towards, even if you don't, even if people don't agree with, homosexuality or gay marriage or whatever it's we're, we're reaching we seem to be reaching more and more a point where we're it's like you know what i don't agree with it but i tolerate it and you know it, it that goes just for like just about anything and just agreeing this is like you know what i might not agree with what you have to say but as long as you're not like being a total piece of shit about that then i can i can get down with with the fact that you agree with it and you know and like the people that i work for now my my, my bosses um they're you know they're both they're both they're both very similar in you know a lot of what they do but they're also very different at the same sense like at the same time like uh you know one of one of them likes to go hunting and his you know fiance does you know the other one his fiance doesn't like guns but she tolerates the fact that he exists you know that, that they exist in, in you know with them and it's just like well that's what you like and you're not stupid about them you know how to use them so Go ahead, go hunting. I'll just give you shit about them because of you know that's 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 how we that's how we operate, and I just think that you know if you do that, it'll get you so much further in life oh, yeah. if you just agree to tolerate and like, and then just the and and like I like I also said earlier, I just am waiting. I'm I'm waiting kind of with bated breath because I really don't want it to come to this, but I'm just waiting for the one couple or the one person that goes. Besides, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to see just how far they'll actually go to protect somebody's religious beliefs and opens up a business that discriminates against people who are white or people who are straight or, you know, that or Christians. Some, you know, something where it's just like, OK, you want discrimination. Here's your discrimination. Now, are you just going to lie back and take it? Because, hey, it's my religious freedom to do what I want. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And then, yeah, see how well that they take that. I'm really hoping that doesn't happen because I don't want anybody to get hurt over this. Yeah. But if it does, well, you know, you can't just you can't say you didn't expect it. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, so with all of that, that is going to be it for this time. Thank you guys so much for listening and, and for waiting patiently, all of you who who's, who have finally who have been waiting around, but like, okay, when's the next one coming? Oh, finally, yay! <laughs> yeah. Uh, Hi well, you. Nice, nice, nice. Thank you for for supporting us. We like you. Yes, we do. Yay. Uh, so uh, if we wanted to find uh, Gonzo Link on the social media, where could we find him? Uh, you can find me on YouTube, Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram, all at Gonzo Link. Um, I'm also on part of the uh, uh, Gotham High audio drama. I uh, play Bruce Wayne. I'm also part of Team Brotherhood's abridged series, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood Abridged. I play the narrator. And 
Yeah, you can also uh, hear my own podcast I do with Zenith Will Rule on his uh, YouTube channel, Zenith Will Review. It's Focus on the Frames, a podcast about movies, and uh, eventually there will be another episode coming out at some point. <laughs> Yay! And if we wanted to find Holly Christine on the interwebs, or could we find her? You can find me a lot of places, social media stuff, as Gookygox, G-O-O-K-Y-G-O-X. That's Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, what have you. My Facebook fan page is Holly Christine Brown, and you can also find me over at Nerdvice. Sweet! And as for me, you can find me on the Twitters and the Tumblrs at gomer 21 X. Uh, I've got a Facebook fan page, Gomer the Ranting Thespian. Go give it a like, you'll like it. Um, you can also find more of my material, other shows, other videos, etc. on rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com. This show, along with my other two podcasts, Thespian Talk and the Poor Charlie Podcast, are also available on iTunes. If you're the kind who just wants to just grab it off of iTunes and not have to worry about going to any sites or what have you. And that should be about it. Every Patreon information is there in the bumper. Hooray. And that should be about it. Oh, also... One thing I do keep forgetting, I do have one for Thespia Talk as well. This show does have its own official Tumblr. It's got condconrtg.tumblr.com. It'll be linked below on, on the site and on the YouTube page and, and everywhere else this goes up. So if you want to send in some feedback, send it there. You can send. I think I have it set up to where you can send in anonymous asks. You can submit stuff if you want. Um, just, you know, it'll be there. Uh, so if you guys want to check it out, we would love to hear from you. You know, we, feedback feedback is important. It is nom 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 nom. Um, so with that, thank you guys so much for listening, and we will catch you next time. And until then, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Holly Christine and Gonzo Link signing off. Bye. See ya. Constructive Deconstruction is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Our show's theme is Exhilarate by Kevin McLeod. Find out more on Incompetech.com. If you like this show and want to help support future episodes, head over to Patreon.com slash Gomer21XX. For a contribution as little as a dollar per production, you can get early access to all future productions, as well as monthly patron-only vlogs and announcements. Our show's artwork was produced by the talented Becky Hopkins, who can be commissioned by going to Patreon.com slash Becky Hop. Check us out on iTunes or visit rtgomer.com for more great shows.